Hello everyone, my name is Stanley St. Rose, and today we're going to be talking about The Sniper, written by Liam O'Flaherty. Now, before I go into summary and analysis of this work, please remember to leave a like, subscribe, and or comment so that the channel can continue to grow. Now, this work by Liam O'Flaherty is just very, very interesting. Liam O'Flaherty um, is, you know, within this short work, um, you know, it, it, it really gives us a hint uh, into a reality that's dark, that is depressing, um, that's just, you know, unimaginable. Um, basically, we get a Republican um, sniper that has, you know, that's at war. Um, and, um, you know, this war... Uh, in Ireland, uh, it's a civil war that's bloody, that's nasty, uh, that's just very ugly. And um, these two men are on a street. They're two snipers on rooftops. There's a Republican sniper, and then there's an enemy sniper. The Republican sniper is the one we're first introduced to. He's maneuvering. He's he's hidden. He's in he's in war. You know, we're not getting close and comfortable with this sniper. He's just at war. All right. He has a flask. He has, you know, alcohol with him. He, you know, when we're introduced to him, he's trying to light up a cigarette. He lights it up and he actually, a, a bullet comes by and narrowly um, hits him. Um, and he's at war, you know, he has his flask to drink for his nerves, we can assume. He's smoking a cigarette or he wanted to smoke a cigarette for his nerves, we can assume. You know, you're killing people. You're trying to stay alive. You're trying to fight this war. It's, it's not fun. Um, so you have these vices, the drinking, the smoking, uh, to keep you calm, to alleviate some of the stress and anxiety that you're facing on the battlefield. And so basically, what ultimately happens is that, um, you know, he's looking for targets as this Republican soldier. Um, he's looking for targets. Um, and um, he knows that there's another sniper on the other side because when he lights up the cigarette, the, the, he almost got hit. So he knows that there's another sniper nearby. Uh, he sees an armored car going by and he doesn't even try to, to shoot the armored car because he knows that the bullets will never get through the car. There's a woman that comes out of nowhere and the woman tells about the enemy sniper that's on the other side of the roof, the enemy sniper. And the enemy sniper sees all this happening. And so when the person, the person in the armored car comes out, um, the, the enemy sniper kills that guy, then kills the woman. Uh, and in an all fell swoop, you know, uh, the, the, the person in the armored car gets killed um, because, again, the enemy sniper is against both the Republican sniper and the two people on the ground, the armored car and the woman. So the enemy sniper, you know, one shot kills, you know, the, the person in the armored car kills the woman. She falls into the gutter. Then he the enemy sniper goes after the Republican that's on the roof. He does a trick of his cap. The Republican does a trick of his cap that tricks the enemy sniper. The enemy sniper hits the cap and uh, the Republican sniper gets um, some good, a uh, good eye on where the enemy sniper is. He shoots him. Uh, and then ultimately the enemy sniper uh, dies and he falls to the street with a huge plump, you know, a huge fall. He falls to the street. Then the Republican sniper wants to see the face of this enemy that he's just killed. He crossed the street. He almost gets killed by, by some shelling. And um, he turns the enemy sniper over and he finds out that it's his own brother. Yep. And that's the story. You know, the Republican sniper, he runs away after that. He's just killed his own brother uh, in this war. Uh, which, you know, it's quite deadly, quite, um, quite depressing, quite horrific. Uh, to recognize that uh, this war is so deadly that it brought two brothers against each other, uh, brother against brother. Uh, this reminds me a lot about, you know, the American Civil War, because in the Civil War, you did have brothers against brothers, family against family in that Civil War. Um, and this often happens in wartime, where families are divided and they have to kill each other uh, because they have different political leanings. Um, so this story, in terms of deeper meaning and analysis here, it's, it's very sad, uh, very grim. It shows you the darkness and, and the horrors that exist in warfare to the point where these two snipers, these two brothers, uh, played a game of chess and 
happened and where one of them died. Uh, and I mean, dying is always horrific, but living with the idea that you've killed your own brother is even, even more horrific. Uh, imagine the, the, the amount of drinking and smoking the Republican sniper will have to do now because he's not just at the war, he's not just killing people. Uh, he will kill, he has just killed his own brother. Um, so this story in terms of, again, in terms of deep meaning, um, you know, war is just a mess, uh, especially for snipers, especially for people who are killing people on, on the front lines of the battlefield. War is just a mess. Uh, it leaves you in a sense of darkness, emptiness. Uh, it's, it's a form of savagery that you know, it's hard to overcome. And we know it's hard to overcome because already during the war, the Republican sniper, he's smoking, he's drinking, um, and it has to do a lot with, you know, we might just say, oh, he just needs a drink, he just needs a smoke. But again, when you're killing people, humans are not built to kill. That's why, you know, humans get PTSD. If we were okay with, you know, you don't hear about lions getting PTSD after a kill. You don't hear about, you know, ferocious animals in, in the wild killing their food and eating it and then feeling sad about getting food. Uh, but humans, we do feel PTSD, you know, PTSD is something that, that happens to people, uh, to, to soldiers after you've killed people in the, in, the, in, in, in the art of warfare, you're not the same, you're not the same, especially this Republican sniper here, he'll never be the same, because he's killed his own brother, his own brother's blood is on his hands, and we already know his, his psychological uh, status is not that good, because he's drinking, he's smoking, um, just to cope. Um, we can assume with the anxiety, with the stress, with the pressure of being at war and trying to stay alive and not trying to die every five seconds. Uh, so it's a very dark tale. Um, but um, yeah, um, well, Flatterhurdy here really captures uh, the, the art of warfare and the, the darkness within it. And, um, you know, the melancholy of uh, the outcomes of war. It's a hard thing to escape. Um, and it's a snapshot of... Just literally how three people die in a split second. You know, out of nowhere, the enemy kills the, the person in the armored car. The woman dies. Then the enemy soldier dies. And just quickly. It's just senseless killing. All these people had families. All these people had lives. In a fraction of a second, they're all, you know, three people are dead. The only one that's left standing is the Republican sniper. And, um... With the cool revelation, well, I think you know everybody dies here because yes, there are three people that died, and the Republican sniper he survives to live another day, but truthfully, internally, ethically, morally, his soul will be forever, you know, in trouble because you just killed your own brother. I mean, emotionally, morally, ethically, that's a form of death itself. So that there's a lot to chew on here. Uh, so that's my summary analysis of the short story by Liam O'Flaherty. Please remember to leave a like, subscribe, and or comment. And I'll see you guys in the next video.